In this section, you'll learn about distance wedge play. We're going to uh, take a, a close look at the, the shots that you now see on the screen. We're going to look at a distance wedge, finesse wedge, and a flop shot as some core primary skills that are necessary for you to, to help improve your scoring with your SMA wedges. We refer to every, the language that Doc Neal and I talk about. We like to stay focused on the control variables. This is the foundation of wedge play in our eyes. You have to be able to have uh, the ability to manipulate these qualities of your technique. And so we're going to, again, look at these three shots. They're all, all going to be somewhat different from each other where different skills are needed. And we're going to allow you to kind of access some drills here. We're going to demonstrate some stuff, take a closer look at what you could do to prepare you to hit these shots. And hopefully it will improve your learning as you uh, take some of these keys to the practice tee in the golf course. And the way each one of these little sections is organized is that we'll, we'll go through the control variables. Uh, Lane or I will give you some good examples of um, some of the Titleist Tour players. And then Lane has put together a series of drills that will really help you to learn the skills that we've just talked about. So the first are distance wedges. And just for absolute clarity, distance wedges are typically in the range of you know a little bit longer than 40 yards this is carry distance out to about 125 yards and that's solely dependent on your club head speed so the tour players uh, can hit a, a pitching wedge probably 140 or maybe even 150 yards but for the uh, typical amateur golfer their pitching wedge is maybe closer to 100 yards and so their distance wedge range may be from 40 to 100 yards. It doesn't matter, but these are the longer distance, distances that you would hit a wedge. And then if we move on to the next slide, the key variables that you must control if you're going to become a good distance wedge player are shaft lean, that's really shaft lean at impact, and then where on the club face you hit the ball. So just for clarification, shaft lean is how much, in this case, forward lean, how much the hands are ahead of the club head at impact. And so with distance wedges, we want something of the order of 10 to 15 degrees of shaft lean. So if you're hitting a 60 degree wedge, then you're de-lofting it by 10 or 15 degrees. So you're delivering loft of about 45 to 50 degrees. Then contact point. So here's an, an image here on the right of a whole bunch of different shots hit with the one club. We want to get our distance wedges being struck from exactly the same place on the club and as close to the sweet spot as we can because that will give us consistency in the amount of energy that's transferred to the ball at impact. If we're hitting it all over the face, we'll never be good at controlling our distance. So now we're going to take a look at Jordan Spieth in this particular space. This is on the long side of things. This is a 118 yard shot. These are beautiful images. This is uh, two, about 2000 frames per second in 4K provided by the Titleist group. Awesome stuff. Great detail. And the thing that kind of jumps out to Doc and I is that first off, he's using the same technique primarily from 70 to 125. You're not going to see a huge change in technique unless there's a specialty situation. OK, so they're trying to master this one particular movement and the the best plan for mastering your distance control and getting very consistent in this space and learning your yardages is ultimately 
You need to learn how far your clubs go by having proper loft gaps in your SMHs and getting a fitting would help you understand if that's the case and how that blends into your primary set. But then beyond that, you're going to have to learn how to get into the proper impact position first. And so from a learning perspective, it's critical to understand the dynamic loft of impact and you have to learn that first. Get into that proper shaft lean position, as Doc mentioned, between 10 and 15 degrees. Then you can start to focus as a second layer on changing your club speed. OK, but the consistency is going to be found through finding the proper shaft lean at impact, changing your speed, and then lastly, having real precise movement patterns from your body because your your rotational aspects of the shot are going to be able to control your consistent contact point. And so some of the de technique details you see here from Jordan, the arms and hands are trying to take loft off of the club. You see a stronger club face angle than in some of the other images. You could see it right here on the takeaway. The face is looking at the ball and you see the way it tips over coming into impact. He's really trying to get the club face stronger. And we know from the other images we've seen out of Jordan on the ferry wedges, he's really trying to lean that shaft forward as well. Um, take loft off the club from that aspect. So he has shaft lean and lead edge concepts employed here. And then you know that the body is supplying most of the energy. He's got a massive amount of rotation and he's controlling the speed by which he turns. And he has to do this in his posture. That's probably one of the main differences Doc and I see. Most weekend golfers are using the opposite formula. The club face is not strong enough. There's not enough shaft lean leaning forward and then in terms of the body, there's a lot of early extension and no rotation occurring at impact. And that's why the ball kind of pops up in the air, slides off the face, and it really doesn't have any spin action that you're about to see and we'll discuss in more detail. They have to, golfers have to really get the club in a better position at the bottom if you want to learn how to spin the ball like you're going to see here. And, and this is the same shot, by the way. So this is the ball green interaction and I'm just going to go back to the beginning here so you can have a look more closely at the angle that the ball is landing at so maybe it's around 40 to 45 degrees and then it's got so much spin on it that the next launch is much much higher and then when it lands on the second hop it's going to land at quite a steep landing angle and so the combination of spin and land angle is what brings the ball to rest. So the quality of your golf ball and club and your technique allows you to generate spin. If you get enough spin on the ball, then on each successive bounce, it'll still have backspin. And so that will stop the ball quickly. If you use a Serlin covered ball, with bad wedges, not those beautiful new SM8s, then you just cannot get that same ball performance that Jordan did. Now, the harder the greens are that you play, that's the firmness, the more you have to rely on spin generation to be able to stop the golf ball. So remember that good equipment will allow you the window to create the spin that you need to stop the golf ball. So now we're going to take a look at an old teaching pro. I'm hitting a nice uh, SMH 60 degree that just showed up and I'm demonstrating a 50 yard shot. And I just wanted to mention a few things that perhaps could help the, the weekend golfer in setup position and, and basically what you're trying to do and reiterate that kind of break it down some basic fundamentals here. So a few things that address ball location is critical. Most of the time people don't have the ball placed far enough back for them to lean the shaft forward enough at impact. So I would if you have a hard time leaning the shaft forward, I'd be sure to take advantage of that. I've got the ball placed pretty close to just slightly behind the center of my stance. If you haven't noticed my weight 
is starting on my lead foot and if you watch my head it's never backing up i'm always moving forward in the motion you never want your weight to feel like it's backing up when you're hitting wedges only when you are hitting really long wedges like over 100 yards can you feel like you start to have a more traditional weight transfer but on a lot of these smaller abbreviated motions that we're going to make from the fairway and talk about your weight needs to start left and go further left throughout the rotational aspects. And then lastly, the arms and hands, like I said, from Jordan Spieth's images, you wanna feel like you play a stronger club face angle. The club face doesn't swivel wide open on the back swing. And then on the way down, you wanna really focus on your lead wrist trying to feel bowed. And if you want, they, they call that the flexion is feel like you're trying to take loft off the club for you. And that'll also help you square that lead edge and get the proper face angle as well. We're going to take a little different look here at what I think is our great fundamentals as you prepare to hit distance wedges. So I've taken my trail arm and I'm pulling my lead arm to the chest and if you notice i go to that 730 position i don't like to stop at impact i like to go to that 730 position so i could get a sense of really how much turn i need to get through the club after you support your lead arm and you can really feel that lead arm on the chest in this drill then i think as a progression you move into putting both hands on the club and trying to feel basically the same sequence in my in my feel i just feel like the club is later than normal i don't tend to keep my connection enough i tend to have my arms run out at impact too much but i feel very rotated when i focus on that rotation and when i make basic movement patterns like that while i'm hitting wedges between each shot it really helps me get more rotation so this is how the pros practice they practice very thoughtfully and very deliberately with a lot of detail. And it's one of the things you can gain by just going to a tour event and watching how they practice. They move slow and they move very thoughtful. So this is a pretty good illustration of maybe something that could help you learn some basic fundamentals there on connection. Now we have a concept known as the launch gate. Doc Neal and I talk about in a lot of our videos. You're really just trying to drive the golf ball underneath that 30 degree launch window. It'd be really unusual if a tour player does not launch his fairway wedge shot under that window because the ball's basically, it, it has a great risk of not spinning and it's subjected to more influences like you, you just don't want a high spinning ball to get up in the air. And so the, a lot of the performance that we see from wedges, again, that, that technique plus equipment formula, a lot of the spin performance is found by trying to do drills like this, where you're really trying to lean the shaft forward and make sure that all your flight windows are under a certain level and then you know you have the friction and the spin on the golf ball you want by the way it's really critical that you do this with a urethane covered ball like a pro v1 or an avx if you try to do this drill with the typical range ball you're going to have a hard time unless you're really good at leaning the shaft like 15 and 20 degrees further forward because a range ball is going to want to slide right up the face and uh, go over that every time even with good technique it just doesn't interact with the materials on the club face the right way and then you might have noticed um uh lane's wrist actions or some of the tour players wrist actions here's a great drill for you to do to get the sense of how early you need to get your lead wrist into flexion Notice Lane's just rehearsing that movement slowly. And um, I, I think that you understand that wrist flexion is when you move the palm of your hand towards the inside portion of your forearm. So it's too late if you try to do it at impact. You must do this 
early and the probably the earlier you do this, the better and then feel like it stays bowed or flexed just as Lane is demonstrating all the way through impact. So I think a lot of people need to just rehearse this movement over and over again without hitting a golf ball and then try to replicate that movement on a relatively short shot. Maybe it's only 30 or 40 yards, but really feel like you're launching this low and you're doing it not by digging the club into the ground, but by bowing the, the lead wrist and rotating um, the body and then leaning the shaft forward. If you enjoyed the content of the webinar, we'd encourage you to visit wedgecraft.com where you can access many, many more hours of wedge play videos.